Hey guys, this is Voiboy Boy of Team Counter Logic Gaming Prime, and I am here today to make a Razor Academy video on one of my favorite champions in the League of Legends, uh, which is Akali. Um, so today I will be playing Akali, and I am playing about at about 2k elo on the Korean server, and I chose Flash Ignite as my summoner spells, and it looks like I'll be going top lane against what is probably Pantheon. Uh, sorry, the, the replay just skipped a little bit there, but it's okay. Um, so, our, we have a pretty balanced team comp. Uh, we have Morgana mid with teleport for ganks. Um, I'm, a, I'm a high damage assassin top with sustain, Akali, a very safe top choice. Um, contrary to popular belief, she can also lane mid uh, if you are more suited to that sort of playstyle. So this guide is not waste at all if you are not 100% a top laner. Um, so, runes and masteries, uh, I actually like to go 6.6 uh, .6 AD into reds, which are marks, to activate her uh, discipline of might passive at level 1, which uh, turns on after you get 10 AD, and so, um, as you can see here, um, well, yeah, the I think the replay might have bugged. But I should be starting with 10 AD, and that would give me Discipline of Might Passive at level 1, which gives me about 8% spell bam right from the get-go, which is huge. So on Akali, you should be running 6.6 .6 AD on reds. Looks like someone gave first blood there, no problem. Where One death is not going to steal our fate. 6.6 .6 AD on reds, um, and then you want to take two magic pen marks just to fill up, fill up that slot. Um, 13 armor yellows, which are seals, uh, 3 flat AP quints to try to reach for that other side of her passive, uh, reaching 20 AP at level 1, also very valuable. Um, and then you want to take 5 flat AP blues, and then the rest of your blues, which are, there's 4 slots left, you would let, you should be taking, uh, scaling AP. So that sets you up for a, a great early game, and it also facilitates you to scale into late game, which is where Kali truly shines. Um, so at level 1, against pa against Pantheon, I skilled Q for the long range harassment, CSing, and poke. As you can see here, he went on me, um, and I just hit with the Q, activate it, do the burst damage, and back off. Um, Mark of the Assassin, basically. What it is, it's a long range nuke, and if you walk into melee range and get an auto attack or an E off on, on a champion that you have targeted with uh, your Q, they will actually take additional burst damage. Um, it deals an equal amount of damage for the initial uh, proc and for when you actually explode it. So it's a very powerful ability, and it's what makes it call it so amazing to play. Um, so, right here, I, went, I fought Pantheon at level 1 and he actually ended up having to waste flash because he just did not expect how much stronger than him I was and right now my Jarvan is setting up for a little gank uh, on the flashless pantheon who is very vulnerable at the moment um, I just keep taking him with marks of the assassin taking his health lower and lower and as you can see he has no more health pots left even though he got an assist at level 1 so he started off with health pots, free boots, and ward and right here you see Nautilus actually tried to game, but because Jarvan was sitting in the brush waiting for that perfect opportunity, we actually got a perfect counter getting off, and that led to me getting level one, level two kill with double buffs on their jungler, and those double buffs allowed me to also kill Pantheon, which is a huge advantage. And on a champion that snowballs as hard as Akali, you do not want to fall, you do not want to let an Akali get that ahead. So right now I have double buffs at. Four minutes into the game, I start off with two kills, and it's looking like a great game for a Kali today. Um, so right now, my lane opponent is dead. What I'd like to do here is to push out the lane as fast as possible, and, and go back, buy, get some wards, get some amp tomes, start on my spell vamp item, and just set this game off on the right foot. Um, right now, my advantage in lane is pretty much secured, so all I want to do is to hold on to it, and wait for that level 6 sweet spot that Akali hits where I can use that to uh, my advantage and snowball the game. Um, I covered runes briefly at the beginning of this video. I'm walking back to lane. It's perfect time for masteries. 
Um, on a collie, I always run 2190, uh, and I will, sh and a screenshot will be attached of the exact setup. But you take uh, just three into eight, three into the AD, not into the AP, as most people think, because you need that AD where you can knock it from anywhere else uh, to activate or passive. Um, I realize the passive isn't on for this video, and I think that, that might be a bug. But you definitely should have both passives activated at level one on a collie. It's not it's not game breaking if you don't. You can play her with no runes or masters at all, but that is the optimal setup. Um, so right now, Pantheon is afraid of me, as he should be. I'm double buffs. I have what is about to become a two level advantage over him, and there it turns back to one level. But you see, even without activating my Q, the damage on him is so great he has to basically get zone himself out from the creep wave or risk taking huge upfront damage. So right now his health is getting lower and lower. I'm watching his health pots. He he only has one left, and I have four in my inventory, as long with the ward in lane. So I know that I'm 100% safe in my harassment of Pan right now. Um, all he all the only options the enemy team really has right now is for Pantheon to try one v one me. And at the moment I am very confident in my strength, so I'm not afraid of that at all. So Pantheon here chose an interesting choice. Um, he saw I was nearing tower range, and he was tired of getting bullied, so he said, he, he told himself, I'm, I'm level 5 too, let me see if I can fight him. So he jumped on me with a creep wave advantage, which should have been uh, a big, a big, he, had, he should have had a high chance to win that fight in an even matchup, but because I was already ahead, just the fact that there was tons of creeps there and then he got the jump on me didn't make much of a difference. I shrouded immediately as he jumped, and I just got enough burst damage on him to finish him off with an Ignite Q combo. So right now my lane opponent is dead again. I'm going to push out the lane as fast as possible and just try to deny him of all these creeps that are about to die to the tower here. Um, the enemy team's best decision here would to have Nautilus to come top as soon as Pantheon died, but Nautilus did not show up and all of these creeps will end up, most of them will end up dying to the tower. Pantheon managed to walk his way back there, and while he did get many of them, uh, he's been missing out on a lot of sweet gold and EXP. So right now you see, uh, I bought a Duran's Blade just to activate my passive because I noticed that my runes uh, bugged out, and now I have 8, 9% spell vamp from the, all of my bonus AD, as well as 17.83% additional magic damage from all my AP that I've gained. So Kali's passive, an amazing passive, one of the best in the game. Uh, you basically scale harder as you get more items. So when Akali starts snowballing, she really starts snowballing. Um, she gets free damage and spell vamp from her passive, which is just phenomenal. So right now I'm level 6, I have 3 alt stacks up, and right now I, am, I know that I'm in control of this game. Pantheon is still level 5, he, all he has is boots, he's been denied so hard of any sort of farm in this game. To the point that I know I can just steamroll him, and I'm not afraid at all of just queuing him for free. So right there, I queued a creep to last hit it, and Pantheon tried to take advantage of that as he should, but not in such an uneven matchup because he's so far behind. But whenever you're laying against an Akali and they utilize their Q to either CS or they waste it, which is basically what using it to CS is, um, that is your best opportunity in all the laning phase to go on her because she will not have her main burst rotation up for a very long time and if you don't take advantage of those small windows of opportunity you're never going to be able to beat a Kali in lane. So right now here I am, I'm just chunking him lower and lower. I ha I could 100% tower dive him right now and I actually go for it. He sees this as well and he tries to flash to get away but I, I very easily manage to catch up to him. And so here I take a little bit of tower damage, but my main goal, again, is to get to the creep wave. I killed my lane opponent. What do you do? You go and push out the wave. You want to deny them as, of as much gold in the XP as possible, and I do just that in my play. So right now, this wave dies. Pantheon is... he just respawned, and while he is level 6, he is... he actually has not hit level 6 yet. If he was 6, I should be telling my team to watch out for his gang, because he could potentially... Uh, do a grand skyfall on another lane and make a play, but right now I think he's just going to come back top and try to get what little gold he can. So here I am running back to top lane. Um, I bought source boots for incredible mid mid game damage. Uh, magic pen is so 
so powerful on Akali just because of her high base damage on all of her abilities. Um, when I hit level 9 with Source Boots and uh, one, one Hextech Revolver, I'm going to be chunking people so hard with the activated damage from my Q. So right now I'm just pushing up the lane. I'm doing this because I know that I can actually power dive Pantheon with little Source And what actually happens here, if you take a look, is that Pantheon lane swap to mid. So he's actually attempting to farm out mid because of how far behind I set him in my, in my play. Um, that means that Rise will be coming top, and I will have to lane against Rise, who is actually relatively warm. He's going to come back with probably a Catalyst and a Tear, and as you can see, he came... He actually did not finish with Catalyst, but I, I, be, I, I am ganked by uh, Nautilus right now. Looks like Rise is a little slow. He was trying to flank me, but I managed to get away very easily. Um, I actually made a very big mistake here. I should have ran. I could have easily ulted to the creep wave that was near his own tower. But I instead I chose to fight, and I was caught off guard by the fact that he had actually had this brush warded, which I should have known, based on how uh, Nautilus played. Um, I ended up getting Rise extremely low. He, my Q damage actually did not explode on him. If it had, then he probably would have died, and I think I would have gotten away with a double kill. But he barely managed to kill me before my auto went off, and that ended up sealing my fate. Um, thankfully though, Morgana came up top. She finished him off, and that was actually a net benefit play towards our team. Um, Morgana comes out from that with double buffs, I get another kill, my snowballing has been accentuated, and I'm just on my way to victory. Um, so right now, I'm waiting for a little bit of gold, I believe I want a blasting wand. Um, some little action going down bot. I'm waiting for something. Got some all chat banter going on between the two teams. Lots of boxes. Um, that's occurring because I do not have the Korean language pack installed on my computer. Um, instead, all I see are blank boxes. So I'm actually running back to lane. Um, Rise is back too. He got his catalyst. Um, he actually has no MR items, which is going to be very bad for him. Um, if I can get on him successfully, I should be able to blow him up in maybe one or two Q combos. Um, so he actually chooses to fight me here. Uh, what I do, I do the, the double Akali trick. I Q someone, I wait for the cooldown of Q to come back up, and then I, I ult to them, and I Q them again. Oh, so close. Oh. So, what happened there was actually pretty, pretty brutal. Um... Let's see if I can get away from this. So that was a really nice play. I ended up getting a double kill for nothing. And what should have been an, a very easy double kill was actually made very, very hard because of how Nautilus's DC interrupted my ultimate. Um, I was mid-air when I was fighting in this top rush. And while I, ult, I, while I casted ult on the low health rise, the damage actually did not go off because of the fact that uh, I was CC'd mid-fight. So I actually ended up doing no damage because my character model did not reach rise, and that made me have to outplay Nautilus a lot harder with the Jukes. But it ended up working out very well for us, and thankfully I was able to go back with my new, newly found gold that made its way into my pocket and buy uh, the Bilgewater Cutlass. Um, I actually like Bilgewater Cutlass a lot. It builds into Gunblade, but also the activation of Bilgewater is so underrated so severely underrated by almost every player in this game. Um, if you are playing a high burst damage assassin type character or even just a melee bruiser that can actually kill people, Village of Arcalus is one of the best buys in the game. Um, champions that can use it very well, stuff like Lee Stan, Akali, Riven, um, anything, that, anything that has kill potential. Uh, the 3 second CC that you get when using it on someone is just phenomenal. Um, I'm probably going to end up using it very soon on Rise to kill him here and he's just not going to expect it. There's literally nothing he can do when I go on him, and so let's see how it pans out. So I'm on level 11 here. Um, there we go. I got the second level of my ult. I'm getting ready for big damages, and I'm also trying to die this guy. So see? Basically, I went into Wolverine mode there. I just saw, I saw a Q proc on him. I thought 
this is this is gonna be an easy kill, and I charge up him, and I end up coming out with over 60% of my health, and he basically could do nothing even under his own tower, which is just, it just shows how strong Nikali gets when she gets some items. So right now I noticed I have enough gold for my gunblade. I definitely want to get it as soon as possible. Um, gunblade costs 600 gold to upgrade from Hextech Revolver and Build Rudder Cutlass. So I actually I'm gonna go back and get a gunblade and probably an additional word. Um, I I actually choose to stay and fight here. I see Nautilus with the Oracle and I try to make a play on him. Um, I believe I flash to get this kill because yeah. I ended up taking out the Oracle. I'm gonna end up dying anyway, but I, in my mind, it was worth it. So close. I always have these these insane fights with Rise where I get I get this close to killing him, even in a in a bad situation. But he always ends up getting the last the last tick off on me. So again, that play was worth it. Um, the safer play there would have been to let my recall finish and go back by Gunblade and extend my advantage, but instead I made I saw the opportunity. I saw the Oracle. I knew that if I could kill Nautilus with Oracle, I'd be not I would be denying him a 400 gold outright. Which if I, in a one for one trade, my life for his. When I, we get our team gets an Oracle, it was it would have it would have been incredibly worth it, and it ended up paying off. Um, so now I'm I did die. My killing spree did end. Rise did get some additional gold, but. Oh, he died. But I did manage to buy my gunblade, and I am well on my way to snowballing this game even harder. Um, so I'm just running back to lane. My lane opponent died. He's doing the right thing. He pushed out the creeps. He killed them all. But he's not going to continue doing so. He's not going to gank tax me that hard because uh, he decides to, to let me get the rest of them. Um, I thought about making a play mid there with my newly found gunblade. I could definitely 100 to 0 Pantheon, but I noticed that Pantheon actually went missing. And he, did, he decided to make a play on the Morgana right now. So, I see some fighting going on. I think, hey, I'm a fed of Kali. My teammates are dying. We might end up losing this game. Why don't I Why don't I roam and try to make something happen? So here I see the low health enemies. They're actually falling right into our trap. Morgana baits them perfectly. And I try to make another play on this Nautilus. Um, what I shouldn't have done on Pantheon, I should not have wasted my Gunblade. I could have definitely used it on Nautilus there and got a free kill, but instead I end up over committing for this for this kill on Nautilus and it end up it, end up, it ends up costing me my life. Ouch. See you later, boy boy. Nice. Thanks for playing. Um Oh yeah. So now I remember. Um during that play if Draven had actually eat over the wall to try to save me. Uh, I would have got the armor boost, and I actually think I would have ended up living from that tower shot. And I could have probably tried to teleport out. Um, if Alistar or the Ez or the Ezreal tried to come and kill me, I think I could have life steal enough off of their off of their bodies to live. Um, not against Rise though; he would have one shot me. But yeah, that that was a very close play that could have went differently. So right now I'm 11, 3, and 2. I got my Gunblade. I just purchased the machine just for some additional burst damage. And I'm running back to my team, who is now team fighting, and actually picks up a nice kill. So I see big wave bot. When you see big wave, you go farm big wave. So I'm actually running bot right now, and I use an alt just to get there. I know the cooldown on my alt. It takes 19.2 seconds to re restore your uh, essence of sh shadows. So I know that just because I use it to farm a creep doesn't mean it's going to be gone for the next fight. And as I predicted, it comes right back up. So uh, I explained a lot about Akali's Q. Um, let me talk a little bit about Twilight Shroud. So Twilight Shroud is an incredibly strong escape and defensive mechanism in Akali's kit, which basically allows her to put down in, a, in an AoE a Shroud of Darkness, which stealths her and gives her an armor and MR boost from all... Uh, against all enemy damage. So right now we can fight. I get I get focused. Um, I'm getting incredibly low here, but as you can see, the program keeps me alive. I just I wait. I'm hunting tiger, hidden dragon, all that good stuff. I don't I don't overcommit when I get when I get caught out by CC because I know uh, during that team fight I was shrouded. 
so I, I had the opportunity to wait for the, the perfect kills. Um, I could have been a little bit more aggressive there. I play, I misplayed a tiny and probably killed everyone there. But I didn't want to die. I didn't want to throw our advantage. I knew I was, I was the most fed one on our team. And if I died, potentially something could go wrong. So I just played it safe, picked a, a nice, a few nice easy kills, and we came out ahead. So that was that was very good. Um, so as I was saying, Twilight Shroud stealths you, as you saw in that team fight. It worked out perfectly. Um, the enemy team got their initial damage rotation off on me, but as soon as I got stealthed by Twilight Shroud, they did not have an Oracle or a Pink Ward, so they were not able to see me. Um, so enemies inside the, the smoker are also slowed by 18%, so it's a soft CC. It works very well in a college favor, and it's one of the most powerful single uh, single spells in the game that's not an ultimate. Um, if you put if you put Twilight Shroud on any other champion, it's it's amazing on a Kali, but if you just if you thought about it as a single skill, it's one of the best for sure that's not an ultimate in the game. Um, and then Crescent Slash, very simple, AoE damage nuke. Um, it deals physical damage, so that's an interesting part of Kali's kit. More more suited towards that hybrid sort of champion that she is. Um, and as of last patch, any enemy champion that has been hit by a, a Mark of the Assassin actually gets blown up by using E on them. So here I made a mistake, I overcommitted on Alistar, I had to flash out. Um, if I died there, it, things could have gone very sour for my team, but we're going to actually decide to go in. Um, I think I die here. Actually I get incredibly low, I take out Rise and then I die. Um, if I got in one more combo up on Ezreal, I would have been able to spell Amp enough to survive. But I ended up dying to his first a little too fast. And here, we're, it's now 3 vs 3. Um, our main damage champions have died, Corky and me. And it's getting a little bit tricky to, to keep, stay ahead in this fight. So this is actually the first team fight of the game that we lose because I misplayed. Um, I went over aggressive on Alistair. We blew his ultimate for free. But I decided to, to stay in and try to get more damage off, which was, uh, which was not the best play in retrospect. Um, but it's okay. I got Chain Vest, I got No Magic, and I'm working towards that, that GA, the Guardian Angel, which is one of the best items on Akali because of how well she can utilize the revive component. She can go into a fight, nuke the squishies, potentially kill them all, and then die. And then as the team fight progresses, her ult stacks will still come back up as the enemy champions die. And she comes back, she has three more ultimates. Let's say you, you go in, you get everyone low, then you die in G Guardian Angel. And your team, your team comes in, cleans up, and then you suddenly have all three of your ult stacks back up from just from getting assists because a Shadow Dance refreshes on kills or assists, so it's essentially a reset. So when you play a call, you can yell out to the heaven, let me get the reset, and do very well for yourself. So here, you catch them out of position, uh, go on Ezreal. I'm actually out of ult stacks, so I cannot keep chasing my out, so as much as I would have loved to. Um, that ended up being a very, very good play for our team. Uh, we're falling farther and farther ahead, and it's getting very hard for them to even come close to catching up. So here I see Alistar out of position. Uh, I just ult him, pick up a free kill, he rise very low as well, get a double, and then just start chunking on this guy. And I believe I pick up a triple kill. There it is, the triple. The coveted triple kill. So now. I have 2.5k gold in the bank, I'm very fed, my tummy is very happy, and I'm doing very well for myself. Um, I believe that I go back by a GA, and probably enough to start on my Lich Pain. Um, on a Kali, you can build many items. Um, she is very viable, played in many different ways. Uh, the most common of which would be sort of a, a pseudo-hybrid uh, Kali, featuring Gunblade, Lich Pain, Rabadons, GA. That kind of stuff. Um, in my opinion, the only defensive item you really ever need on a Kali is Guardian Angel. Otherwise, you should try to buy as much damage items as possible and just milk her for all she's worth in team fights. Um, so see, I have the Guardian Angel aura around me. I have now have essentially two lives in team fights, and I am packing an insane punch with my abilities. Um, my Mark of the Assassin is bursting for like over nearly 500 damage in total before resist and each of my ultimates are hitting for around 400, which is insane. Um, when I hit level 16, that number is only going to increase, and honestly, at this point in the game, I'm so far ahead that the next team fight will decide it all. 
Um, I see a Nautilus doing race. He's out of position. I drop a gunplay on him, and I get caught by the whole enemy team. But as you can see, I have so much spell damage partnered with Soraka on my team that I'm just able to pick up these kills one after one after one and just make the enemy team feel a little bit less good about their day. Which is not my intent at all, but when you're playing against a set of Kali, you're going to have a bad time. So right now, I see I have enough for Lich Man. I pick up these last seals with Crush and Slash, and my team makes way to start pushing mid. Um, just whacking the turret. Whack, 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 whack. Getting some, getting some admirations of love. And we go in for the last team fight. I actually get dropped extremely low, but I don't end up dying until that very moment where I decide to overcommit. Oh, I got caught up by the CC. So I got a little greedy there. Um, I dove to double turrets with four champions under them for an additional kill, which was not, not the best play in retrospect, but when you're so far ahead, you sometimes make those those crazy and kooky plays just for the fans. Um, what ends up happening is that my team actually, a few of them get picked off here, and that, that was as a result of my, my recklessness, but I realized my mistake. Uh, I decided at this point that we were gonna take the secure advantage and win this game safely. So no more reckless plays like that. My GA is going to be down for about 5 minutes, which is the timer. Uh, it has a 5 minute cooldown between uses. Um, and so knowing that this was one of the last plays of the game, I could have potentially sold my Guardian Angel and bought additional damage items or defensive, or just like stack some defensive sets. But uh, I decided to just keep it and continue on because there's no guarantee that this that this game is going to be over in the next five minutes, even though, uh, basically, I knew if we played a, a proper team fight, we were going to win 100%, so selling my GA was not a bad option. Um, I'm very close to level 16 here. Um, I'm just running around the jungle, trying to find people either out farming or putting down wards for Baron. Um, I see a very big creep wave top. I know that this is going to give me level 16, and now my ultimate is just doing almost... 400 additional damage on every yeast, and the fact that it could be up a potential 10 times if you factor in cooldowns and every reset that you get for killing a champion in teamfight, that's pretty insane to think about. Um, that's why I love playing Akali so much. Uh, she's a blast to play. When you go into a teamfight, you, you get rewarded for killing people, which is actually, actually a very fun mechanic. Um, you actually get rewarded for assisting people too, so people don't call you a kill stealer when you get kills with Akali, even though Akali, as a, as a hard snowballer, as an assassin, she makes use of kills very well, and so no one should be getting their feathers rustled when you get so-called KS on Akali. So here the enemy team tries to initiate on us, they Shirelia towards us, but we ended up just running away. Um, this might be the last team, but let's see if we can get initiate. Morgana has just out. Uh, if I had GA there, I would have gone in on that. Uh, I want to play safe, as I promised myself. I just wait for the better opportunity. Um, as you can see, Nautilus dropped a pink ward before that fight, and the action begins. I pick off one, I pick off another, I pick off another, and I actually end up dying to rise. So he gets me with the last, his dying breath. He's like, oh, I'm dying, and then he kills me. Um, I didn't get the reset, unfortunately. I didn't get the pen to kill, as I had been hoping for. But I ended up, I ended up doing very well for myself in that game. Uh, I get more admiration of love, and the game ends as 24, 6, and 7, 157 CS, and we made it to roughly 27 minutes into the game. So that was a very good game for me as a Kali, and it just hopefully you got a little taste of what playing Kali feels like, and maybe you can go try her out yourself and have a blast and have just as much fun as I do uh, playing Akali. Um, if you want additional information for the runes and masteries, they will be attached uh, below this video. And thank you very much for watching. Uh, this has been CLG Boy Boy's Razor Academy video, Guide to Akali. And stay tuned for our next video in the lineup featuring Doublelift, who will be playing Vayne. Um, thank you so much for watching. And yes, have a good day.